honoured to be playing the Back to Basics 22nd birthday, 20 years after I did the second birthday on Saturday. And, you know, Dave has plans for, like, movie, book, and a book. Does that guy remember anything? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we're going to... Um, I'm bringing... Back to Basics was a major ingredient in everything I did in the 90s, and I'm diving back in. Yeah, well, we're glad you're up here. But I'm going to be very careful about my foot. <laughs> yeah, no, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's all going to come back, and, you know, next year, there's Ibiza, and, you know, I want to go back there on my own terms, and because last time I was there, I wasn't in very good shape, and I want to sort of go back there, um, not on a big white horse. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I hate boundaries and boxes in music. Um, I don't like them, you know, because it's all music to me. You know, I mean, I can listen to banging techno, but then I can listen to, you know, a Ronnie Wood solo album, and then go and play Mott the Hoop or The Clash. I mean, I got all that, a lot of that from The Clash, because they never saw any... Listen to, you know, London Calling, all the various music going on there. And Topper was into jazz funk, and he wasn't allowed to tell anyone. <laughs> you know? It was like, and he still moans about that. But uh, no, I mean, I just think it's all interrelated. You know, uh, it's you pass it on. You try and tell. I mean, I do try. When I got marooned, every time I'd go to a Clash event when I come up from Cornwall, I miss the last train. And this happened on Sunday when we had Robin's party, and. Um, I ended up in a busload of students in a minibus who missed their train too. There was like eight of them. We all chipped in at tenor and stuff. And I was sort of sounding them out. Who have you heard of? They'd never heard of Mott the Hoople. No. Not really. I said, all the young dudes? Not even that. How about David Bowie? I, uh, you know, it really is like that. I, I'm shocked. It's you know. But they never heard of them. Yeah. I I don't know about guitar bands. You know, I I hear a lot in electronic music, not necessarily even. I mean, uh, the, the DJ techno house thing is another, another world. There's going to be new names all the time. But as far as big bands go, I, there aren't many. You know, I can't think, you know, of any band I'd like to go and see um, that's come up in the last couple of years. I mean, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I've got them on. That's another thing I'm doing. We haven't talked about this, have we? The gun club. <laughs> no, no, of course not. I mean, again, one of, the, one of our first conversations was about Jeffrey Lee Pierce. In fact, I remember. Oh, no, fact, here we go again. In fact, it was, I think we were, talking, we were talking maybe 15 years ago about, about when, when Jeffrey Lee Pierce had died and, and how he'd never really, really been given the kudos that no. we, we believed he richly deserved. Well, he's my son's gra- uh, grandfather, <laughs> godfather. Jeffrey <laughs> Pierce is my dad. No, I, I think the Gun Club were like very, very influential band. I mean, they, they started blues punk and everything, and they, Jeffrey was, well, he was president of. We came from the same background. He was running Blondie's fan clubs. He even dyed his hair with a black bit at the back, like Debbie. And um, he was a lovely guy, but he was also on a collision course with a, a, a sad end. I mean, I've never seen anyone more relentless, even at Back to Basics. I mean, he really was uh, downing everything that was coming his way. And there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you know where to, you know, have a couple of days off every now and then. But Jeffrey was. But he was a doomed genius, and I was so sad when he died. You know, he had a brain hemorrhage. 
but he also had a lot of other stuff wrong with him. I used to meet Jeffrey after work when I was doing press for some record company. And we'd meet in a pub called the Kensington um, in West London. And he'd be sitting there reading his William Burroughs books in his hat um, and writing stuff. And I mean, he, he really got me into Sun Ra, who's um, I ended up doing a compilation album of. That's right, yeah, yeah. And we, me and Jeffrey formed, when, when he split the gun club, me and Jeffrey formed a band called the Astro Unicorn Experimental Orchestra. And, <laughs> and we, of course. We did one gig at the Embassy Club. No way. Yeah, no, it got. What, well, in Islington? No, no, in uh, Regent Street uh, or something. But we did one gig, and Jeffrey didn't play or anything. Well, he did. He played electric piano, and he had like a, a drumstick between his teeth. And he just told us to get up there and do stuff. And he'd be like Sun Ra and direct us with a drumstick. <laughs> and I, I didn't know what I was even playing, but I had a pair of bongos in the end. Yeah. Lemmy said, Lemmy walked in, and we said, "Can you be in our band?" He said, yeah, uh, if I play the fruit machine. So we had to. <laughs> we, <laughs> We, we, we got a fruit machine on the side of the stage and Lemmy was playing that. <laughs> and there was about 10 other people all just blowing saxophones and bongos and stuff. So hang on a minute, I'm just to like recap The Clash, The Ramones, <laughs> Bowie, what the hoop no, for? Yeah, no, and now it's, it's in a band with Lemmy and Jeffrey Lee Pierce. No, Lemmy, I can never consider... <laughs> no, but it no, got... You were in a band with Lemmy, though, weren't you? You've got the full one night. Yeah, yeah. Well, are you talking about the motorhead tour? Oh, no, well, no, that, that's something completely different. You were, you were in a band with Lemmy playing a fruit machine. Oh, right, machine, right. We no, were, no, no, we were, this is one thing we found out earlier on. Dean Kavanagh over there and, mm. and, and Chris and myself, we, we didn't know this. We were all at a motorhead gig in 1980. Yes, we George were at St. Hall. Bradford. No, Bradford, St. George's Hall. So you're in a band with Jeffrey Lee Pierce and Lemmy playing a fruit machine and loads of saxophones. Yeah, and youth on bass and the Cure's drummer and some other blokes with sax. It got panned in the press. It was just a noise. Yeah. So we did another one about a month later, but this time it was Jeffrey um, just playing acoustic guitar and singing <laughs> gun club songs, which was good, with Nick from Flesh for Lulu. But he yeah. got me in. He wanted me to be a preacher, and he called me the Reverend Jack Daniels. <laughs> and um, this is where my son got his name. And I've only just realized this. Um, I, I, I had to put on a vicar outfit and drink a bottle of Jack Daniels. And I, I'm just standing there singing gospel songs in my Paul Robeson voice, <laughs> which is like my party piece oh. at the time. And um, leading all this fire and brimstone testimonial, Jeffrey was joining it. I've got it all on tape still. Yeah, yeah. And Jeffrey, you know, he's, he's joining in. And I've got Jeffrey singing, I got 75 pairs of underpants, wear them up, you know, all this sort of yeah. stuff. And um, that got panned too, so we gave that up and he reformed the gun club. But um, uh, I, when my son was born, I didn't know what to call him, so I was going to call him Jack Daniels Needs, yeah. which I thought, no, it's too obvious. So he became Daniel Lee Needs in Testament to Jeffrey. Uh, and Jeffrey came around to see him when he was born and I deed in my front room. So I had to walk him around, he turned blue. You know, I had to do the wet towel treatment. But he came around and he went, my boy, when he saw my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, I love Jeffrey. And so I'm now doing uh, a thing called the Jeffrey Lee Pierce Project. Which it's got to volume three, which um, I'm gonna have a meeting about it next week. We'll, we'll get the track listing. We've got Nick Cave, um, Debbie Harry, Blondie, yeah. Iggy Pop's supposed to be singing on it. We, we all do a version of a Gun Club song. Yeah, yeah. A lot of it, it started with ones that Jeffrey did unfinished and they got finished by Nick and Debbie, all people who knew him. Yeah. And I did one, I'm doing one for the next one. Brilliant. You know, I just want to honor the man's name because I think he's the great, yeah, he is, yeah. underrated, um, I'm going to wear my Jeffrey T-shirt at Basics on Saturday. <laughs> Who's off to Basics on Saturday night then? So this half of the room are, that half are not.
and Dave's in the middle. <laughs> Before then, though, are you going to play some tunes? Hey? Are you going to play some tunes? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> what now, you mean? Well, it's now or a bit later. You will come back at some point. In fact, I think... Guys, should we, should we hold a... a Honorary 60th birthday party for Chris next oh, yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, yes. Here. You know, see, you'll have your, you'll have your official one. This will be like the, you'll be like the queen, you know, is it the queen who has two birthdays? <laughs> no, but, well, I'm, I'm going to have a few. You, right, so we've got one here. I, no, I'm not, I'm not letting it go past that easy. I'm, yeah. I'm going to have a, several. I've got to have one like Robin had. Yeah. 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 A year's worth of birthdays, yeah. yeah. 21st birthday. Yeah. Birthday parties. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's what I do. So yeah. and so what we'll do is we'll so we'll 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 have you playing some music, but before that we'll do and we'll get some more because honestly I could sit here all night and listen to you. Just, just really? this amazing experience that you've had, uh, these experiences that you've had in your life, and they go on and on and no, and but they can, happen, you know. Yeah, I know, and, I know, I know. And, and to me, it seems like. A, a, you know, sometimes it seems like another person's, like a film or something. But every now and again, I get a little memory, and I think it just when these people now get documentaries made about them, you know, and I see like Debbie up there or something, and it's like, well, I remember her coming out of the bathroom with her trumpet. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? I better explain that one. <laughs> I think you should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on. No, I was at the Royal Kensington Hotel. She was in the bathroom. She came out with a trumpet. Be before they did Dingles in 1978. I've got about these things up because I'm sort of throwing out surreal shit. Yeah, no, it's the way it should be. Yeah. Chris, thank you. No, all right, mate. <laughs>